Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Great Britain, episode number nine. And I have done the renaming of our Renown class. This one was actually spelled G-A-R-D, but I think that it was either meant to be spelled this way or I would prefer it to be spelled that way anyways. So now we have, um, yeah, our six new Dreadnoughts are renamed. So the Renown class, the, this is basically, it should be called like the Dreadnought class. If I had been smart about it, I would have named it the Dreadnought class, but... I'm really, really interested to see how a no secondary, a very extremely pure all big gun dreadnought does. And I think it, it's, uh, it's got a solid design to it. I'm I, like thinking more about it. I, I don't, I don't think there's any immediate problems with it. It's going to have a really good uh, chance to always be landing at least two of its guns because these side guns uh, rotate pretty far back. I don't think this middle one, that one's the 45 degree angle one, but this one can actually cover like, a, it's like a 20 degree, maybe a 15 degree angle or something back. So as long as we move at small um, headings, not directly towards or away from our target, uh, we should be getting at least two turrets firing. Um, okay, so that said, lots of months left on those, but we have six new names. So those have all been crossed off the list. By the way, uh, I think it was, I forget which one of these was the, the Brunder book, but Brunderbrook was uh, Coleslaw. He was saying, I'm sorry if I'm one of those people who just asked for a name without commenting. First of all, totally no problem. You can just comment and ask for your ship in the game because obviously Col I know Coleslaw is the one who follows the series regularly. I've seen him comment in some of the later videos. So uh, I'm not worried at all about that particular thing, but it's even fine if you decide to put your name on and just watch. I don't um, ask for comments. Uh, I just wish I was able to determine which people would actually follow the series. I'm sure that there's probably some episode one people who put their name in the, on the list and then disappear. And those are probably just taking up spaces that other more um, devoted followers would would rather see their names in. Because we have a list that's like over 150. I'm pretty sure we won't be able to get all those in. So that's the unfortunate trade-off. But that's okay. The, getting your name in the game is fun. Um, and we have such a great variety of really good names that I'm I'm actually enjoying the system. Like Bird of Prey, Kestrel, we just looked down these lists, Interceptor, St. George, we have really good names because people are doing a fantastic job naming things appropriately. So that's why I'm like completely in favor of continuing this naming idea, um, you know, forever. But uh, I mean, it just comes at some cost of managing things on my end, but that's okay. Okay, so now what else do we want to do? Let me first make sure my volume is not blowing you out. Good, I don't think it is, but I'll reduce it a bit. It might be a little too high. So let's just go on. We, we pushed several, we should be able to push several months while ha ha ha, the new Italian battleship still working on the old pre-Dreadnought battleship design. Um, we're getting a lot of weight savings and stuff like that. That always happens right after you build a big ship, but that's okay. I was actually thinking about the destroyers we have, like maybe we should get a new one. Um, I know that light cruisers haven't performed particularly well, so it might be nice to get a new light cruiser class as well. But um, probably not going to get any new armored cruisers for the rest of the game. So if you were just planning on... Oh. Yes, we can. We can definitely beat them. Uh, I probably could have said no to cause budget up instead, but, you know, tension does increase budget, so we only have two more months. Are we going to make it? Oh, we're not, but so close. <coughs> Excuse me. You're so close, though. Oh, could could it be? It's nearly the, we're at the, really at the cusp. Was that um, a reminder that the United States is advertising? Oh, they're now advertising 13-inch guns. Well, they're certainly advertising better 13-inch guns than us then because we still have quality negative two, which is just atrocious. Again, I won't even build ships with that terrible of a gun. It's not even worth it. Uh, the only reason you might build quality negative two 13-inch guns is if you suspected very soon you'd be getting better 13-inch guns <laughs> and you would be fine retrofitting it. Retrofitting, speaking of, we'll, we will have to do that. Hopefully before war with the old colonies, but it does, certainly looks like it's heading that way. And again, another increase. So lots of tech. I'm not even worried about the whole savings and all that. That only, in my opinion, I mean, everything helps right now, but it only becomes really important when you get towards the end game, when you're trying to get the, the best end game ship first. 
Oh, this is gonna be perfect. We have one more month. Oh, two more months. So we will have to probably cause, uh, pause the rainbows construction for a bit, but that's okay. Yeah, we will have to pause at least one of these ships. I think just one with 3 million. Yeah, we should make it with just this one halted for a moment, which means that we will be getting all of our ships um, all of, well, five, most of our battleships, dreadnoughts, I should say, most of our dreadnoughts will be available for this war. And we actually want to kind of slow this war down a, a small amount, just to make sure that these ships are complete. Oh, this is fantastic. So the Brunderbrook, Brunderbrook was commissioned and it is found that the ship easily surpasses her design speed, which is wonderful news, really wonderful news. Uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II, the Pog Champ, the Vanguard. So the Vanguard is the. Uh, she's the namesake of the design, even though we've renamed him from Renown, but that's okay. Alright. This will strengthen our initial standing and lessen tensions, but the money to finance. What? It is not a good. We need to be spending. This is tension down, but it is prestige up. Do we want to buy ourselves some more? We have two ticks before we go to war. We want that money. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Oh, well, no, that's not from the sailing regatta thing or whatever. That's not from the event, that's from all those dreadnoughts finishing. Okay, so we now have plenty of money. We can start building more of these if we want. Well, let's first take this one off, pause. The indubitable will be finished. This was indubitably, but you know, for ship names, they're all like the courageous, not courageously. So it'd be the indubitable, not the indubitably. So I made that small change as well. Um, hope those minor changes aren't uh, I mean, they're necessary in my opinion, but I hope they, they aren't uh, taken the wrong way. So let's see. Um, I think we just keep pushing on. What other thing could we do? Oh, you know what? Actually, I might take a brief cut in the video here because I, I forgot I have to align everything. Well, okay, let's go a couple more months. I'm, I'm going to have to figure out where everyone's going to go, though. Oh, my goodness. The new naval secretary believes submarines are the key to victory. I wish that at this point we could actually view our technology. Like what is our current technology? Can we view that? I don't think so. It would be nice to see what kind of, oh, we can. We do have coastal submarines, but that's so terrible. This is literally a quote. I think the un-British thing is literally a quote from uh, the British Admiralty. I don't remember. Um, it was people, not Jackie Fisher, he was in favor of submarines, but this is actually a quote from them. Submarines are underhand, unfair, and damned un-British. So uh, that was their way of saying, like, you know, it's, we shouldn't be building submarines. They they thought that submarines were basically, should be branded as the pirates of the sea and uh, should have r strong penalties against them. But I think that we will just say this, which is going to be a budget hit, but prestige up. Okay, let's do that. I just don't want submarines yet. I do want submarines, but not yet. Because right now we only have the really pathetic coastal submarines. I don't even know what our uh, reliability would be at. I'm sure it'd be terrible. Okay, now we have six million uh, a month that we're already making. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll wait. Uh, let's get this one back up to, uh, yeah, let's do this test. Let's get this one back up to active. If I'm not mistaken, this one was, it. oh wait, this is the Magenta. We were supposed to scrap her ages ago. Does she have a design worth keeping? Well, she kind of does. I mean, we already spent all that money keeping her afloat for God knows how long. I was supposed to do a test with active fleet versus reserve fleet to see if they get all the way back up to elite status, but I failed to do that. And now I'm wondering if we've, if maybe if we've already waited this long, should we not just keep the how, the magenta class? I should rename this one. I, I mean, I thought it was going to be scrapped, but... <laughs> um, hmm, decisions, decisions. 231. She's really cheap. You know what? We'll, we'll keep her. We will keep her. 231,000. She has 12-inch guns. I mean, what more would you ask for of a ship than 12-inch guns on, on these old battleships? 17-inch 17 17 -inch secondaries is going to be good against everything but destroyers. So... She kind of reminds me a little bit of our new Dreadnought because the new Dreadnought also is not going to be very good against destroyers. So, the age of, oh, this could be problematic. Okay, yeah, we're really approaching the 
Oh my goodness, four centerline turrets. My goodness, ship designs are coming quick. Fast and furious, I should say. Uh, we have the advantage of ship design, but geez, seven already. My goodness. Actually, we have eight in fire control. That's even better, <laughs> which I'm even more happy about. Fire control is, you know, one of the biggest limiting factors. So maybe, is it time yet to kind of re-navigate or like redistribute all my ships? Because I do want to pull in, I better do it now, yeah. Let me take a, pr a quick cut in the video, just so I can re, um, reorient, reposition, there's the word I was looking for, reposition, all my fleets where they should be. Because if we wanna um, cycle the ships that were in Southeast Asia back home, the only exception is the Black Adder and her sailing mate, the Baldric. These will stay in Southeast Asia, as is Captain uh, Tomislav's request. So I believe his request was to stay in Southeast Asia. And Tomislav, you veteran captain you, if you have a different opinion, just leave it in the comments and we'll move you wherever you desire. Okay, but otherwise we'll just start cycling if I see him in Northeast Asia, or I mean Northern Europe, we'll move him somewhere else. So let me just take a quick cut, and when you see me back in a second, these will all be redistributed and ready to move to their new uh, patrol area. All right, just popping back in real quickly. I did end the turn because I actually want to start getting some of these things moving and figuring out what kind of damage I've done to foreign stations. So I thought I'd just leave this log up, um, and we'll probably need to go one more. I want to see, yeah, probably one more turn. I'm going to leave the armored cruisers more or less where they are. I moved a few more into Northeast Asia, uh, into the North the North American East Coast, sorry, the East Coast, and I sent one to the, to the West Coast as well, it was the Aegis. The Aegis is going towards the West Coast, so that's a dangerous operating area for her, but she'll be joining at least the uh, the St. George out there. So they'll, they'll have a tough, um, they'll be alone essentially out there trying to hold down what might be a very big American fleet from invading our colonies over there. I mean, we want to be invading the colonies, but we also want to protect our colony, which I guess is British Columbia. So we probably wish we had built more fortifications there. I don't know what fortifications they already have. It's not listing any here. Does it list them? It does not. So I have to go to forts and see where we have some forts. Do we have any in... Maybe I've neglected to build them there which is an oversight. But it's never too late to be corrected, I suppose. We might as well build some fortifications now. Six inch ones should only take, yeah, six months. Okay, those are the smallest, yeah, let's just get two at least in British Columbia. Am I sure I don't have any there? No, I have two there already, okay. Good, well, we're gonna have two more. <laughs> That's fine though, I'm fine with that. We have the budget to do it anyway, so should help protect um, British Columbia from invasion. Hopefully, that is that is one of the game mechanics they added at some point, that coastal forts are supposed to do that. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to take another cut. We might go forward a couple months. I'll let you know if anything interesting happened in the message logs. I'm assuming that it's gonna be okay, that nobody's gonna miss those message logs, just for a couple months. I just wanna make sure we get everything oriented out and then we can be spamming next turn and quickly jump into the future. So I'll see you back in a sec. Well, I just uh, probably flipped off the recording about 15 seconds ago, hit next turn, and then this appeared. Um, yeah, so this is going to be war with us. Uh, sorry, war with us. War with the, the U.S. It was actually kind of funny. I said war with us. They are going to war with us, but you can almost say us as if you were saying U.S. So we will do this. This is honestly just pretty much a guarantee we go to war. So we do it. Great Britain declares war on the old colonies. All right, so we'll start off with a convoy defense. I'm pretty, pretty happy about this, actually. They declined. Fantastic. So we get one turn for free. How's our foreign stations going? Yeah, West Africa's in pro having some problems. I will need to move somebody down there. Let's quickly throw... Uh, do we have any light cruisers in the Mediterranean? We can send two down there. Yeah, let's do that. Send two to West Africa. 
and we probably should be doing some kind of rating. I know that all the rating hap um, is helpful in Northern Europe, no matter who you're fighting. It's just built into the game that way. It's a game mechanic that a lot of trade passes through Europe. So we will, we have new people here. So these four ships, wait, these were the ones who were used to be in Northern Europe. And now we have these, the Glowworm Achilles. These guys were all stationed somewhere else. Let's get two of them to do raiding, even though it uh, maybe it isn't, isn't totally necessary. How many, you know what? I actually do want to see how many light cruisers we have in Northern Europe. Yeah, we have quite a few more than I thought. So let's get two more just at random to also be raiders. It's going to re-mess up all the stuff, but that doesn't matter. And that's probably all the ships I'll choose for raiding for now. Huge budget, so we should consider building something, but I'm going to consider it in the back of my head. Okay, good. So this war, we don't have to start off in the terrible situation that we didn't have any minesweepers. We are now set. And considering we have 35 of them, it might be enough to carry us through to the rest of the, I mean, to the end of the game. Um, let's just set one of our battleships in the Mediterranean on foreign stations just to get rid of this for now. Next turn, new docks are complete, whole construction. Uh, we sink one submarine, they sink two ships. They sink a ship in the Mediterranean. Oh. And our Albion intercepts a U.S. Raider in the Indian Ocean. Well, that not that nice? She asked to be, re I think she requested to be put there, or, or at least belayed the order that she would move somewhere else. I forget. So it's really cool because she was protecting the spices, right? But now she actually gets to see action, which is fantastic. I always like to see a captain rewarded for his, for his, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um persistence kind of no dedication thank you dedication is the word thank you to myself i suppose <laughs> i'm thanking myself it doesn't matter here we go unknown ship sighted we have no idea but it can't be anything better than a oh god it they actually have battle cruisers so this could be a battle cruiser but i no it's not it's a des moines class light cruiser 21 knots cannot even outrun us four inch guns light armor if we can close with this thing, it is a goner. So I'm gonna assume it's gonna turn south, it turned north, it's fine. We'll just make all steam towards her. And as soon as we can get our 10 inch guns to go, which is probably by now, what's our range? Oh, we're about, let's try to close a little, nah, that's actually sufficient. Yeah, we're getting some hits with our six inch guns even. Uh, eventually our 10 inch guns, I hope. We'll try to use the wind to our advantage by sticking on her south side. Yeah, moderate breeze, worth pursuing, I think. Still have plenty of time left in the day before... Ah, uh, yeah, that was a nice broadside. Now it's going to be much more important to stay out, tor out of torpedo range. But it looks like the opening battle for the old colonies fighting their old uh, motherland is working out pretty well for us. There it is. Uh, devastating defeat for the U.S. I mean, I would hate to be on their side fighting an armored cruiser with a light cruiser. I just I loathe that. But if we're given the advent, the opportunity to fight the with the tables turned, with the shoe on the other foot, yeah, I'll take. <laughs> I I'm not gonna, you know, if they don't fight fair, I won't either, <laughs> and they don't. So we have more um, ships in South America and West Coast than we can support. What in God's name do we have any ships in South... Oh, okay, they're moving. That's the Aegis moving to uh, the West Coast. Yeah, that makes sense. So now are we good on... I'm going to actually send this one north to Northern Europe. I hope that this force uh, actually keeps um, her not from wandering on her own. And I think pretty soon here, it's going to be time to launch a huge invasion, which is, it's not going to be like huge. I mean, it's a huge fleet assault onto the East Coast. Let's see where the Americans are. They don't have much, but they have a few things in Northern Europe. Their main fleet is what, in the Mediterranean and the Caribbean? It is. Well, we can actually get to the Caribbean. That's not a problem. Yeah, and there's a lot of holdings in the Caribbean that would be fun to get. Um, I think some of these are outside, obviously we can't take this one, home area, and this is home area, and this is home area, so we could conquer Maine, it only has a value of 8, 
But there's a lot more targets down here. Value 1, value 5. Panama will be wonderful to take. I think that would give us access to the Panama Canal eventually. Yeah, so there's good targets down in the Caribbean. So we could send... It is just one month's journey for our forces in Northern Europe. So that wouldn't be... That would be I don't know. Lots of options. Um, the Mediterranean, the star means we were raided here. That's right. And we actually have a lot of ships in the Mediterranean, if I'm not mistaken. Mediterranean... Let's just sort by location. No, we don't have that many ships there. We are lacking an armored cruiser. Okay, let's go back to type and see what kind of armored cruisers we have. Is any of these? Yeah, we do. The Exeter will now move to Mediterranean. Hopefully we can pick off that raider. Okay, next turn. New Providence. I don't know where New Providence is. It must be the East Coast. Okay, light armor configuration. That's fantastic. I guess we're really due for um, a new light cruiser then. I was thinking about getting a few. I, I really want a lot of light cruisers, but okay, that's not good. Cruiser action will accept this. They declined. Um, convoy attack. Now we don't... We'll do it. Let's do it. <laughs> this will be exciting. We'll pit... This is our us pitting our... And notice I didn't move the ships that were in the Caribbean because they weren't really seeing action before. But they're going to see a lot more action if we're fighting the Americans. So I figured um, to move them away would be doing them two back-to-back uh, -back injustices. So we have the War Dog and the Highlander. I think they paired up previously. Here we go. We are likely to face some light cruisers here. So this will be a challenging mission. Unknown ship sighted. There they are. Squad Max. And here we go. Let's go in. State of the East, where the wind... Oh, God, they actually have a... Uh, well, this is a lost cause. Wait. Is it? No, it's a Cincinnati class, and... Yep, yeah, it's a Cleveland class. Okay, so what are these ships? What would did we identify as a... That is an extremely light ship. What the heck? How did they even get this many guns on it? My goodness, that's good armor, too. Hell, that's a hell of a ship. Considering, like, if you look at mine, I mean, they have one less broadside than I do. They have a 5 and I have a 6, but 4,100 versus 5,800. So, yeah, they only have one extra, of, and I guess I have slightly heavier armor, though. Okay, well, anyways, let's just go in. Ah, you know what I just thought of? We didn't put central firing on our ships, damn it. Well, if they're going to go in piecemeal, let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. Mouth. Let's just sink them one at a time. Okay, the warden is dead. Let's just make sure we get wind advantage here. Cleveland took a hit. We'll slow this down. This is going to be an exciting one. We are definitely starting off the fight well. And I'm thinking that that's a lot of the fire control we got going. Let's pull away a bit because I don't want to be torpedoed. That move right there almost screams torpedo. So let's pull back a bit. Okay, straighten out. Uh, we did take our first hit, but you know what? If there are other light cruisers backing off, this does make sense for us to move in. Let's also encourage our own ship to launch torpedoes. If nothing else, it'll get them to maneuver somewhat wildly. Well, lo the lookouts have finally detected the second fleet of light cruisers coming in from our south. Well, really, the southeast. Ah, this is a problem. This is a problem. We probably not in good shape to fight all of them. Let's go back to the Cincinnati, if we can. If we can polish her off, at least this won't be a total loss. The War Dog, what has happened to you, my friend? Engine hit? It is. That engine hit has probably caused him to get to be sunk. So the War Dog will have a hell of a night. Let's see, night. That's actually a good point. It is almost night. No, I don't think that'll come fast enough for us. So like I said, let's just... Because I could force these guys to stay together, but the, the thing is, the slower you move, like the War Dog is right now, the easier you are to hit. So I think I'd rather take my chances, go for the Cincinnati, at least sink one of theirs, 
Maybe the war dog. Oh, okay. They, they, this is actually buying the war dog time. She did take another hit, but if we can get to the Cincinnati, and we also need to um, sink a few ships, and then if we can disappear into the night, this, this doesn't have to be all bad. Heavy damage. Okay. Good broadsides. Torpedo. Oh, just missed. Good idea, though. Really good idea. Okay, let's get the war, ha, war, war dog. <laughs> the warthog. Not a bad name, though. So you get her to start moving north. Let's get the Highlander to just continue to tease the Cincinnati. That's a lot of damage on the Cincinnati. Is she on fire? She is. Okay, let's call her sunk. The war dog has rejoined. We need to get in there, though, and sink some transports. That's our mission, and it will affect our victory points. All right, let's cut across. Let's see if we can do some damage to the, to the Minneapolis. I know that we've already taken damage, but if we can shield, yeah, like this, basically. <laughs> if we can shield the War Dog with the Highlander, I'd like to do that. Um, they turned away. That kind of smells of torpedoes. Let's move away. And let's just move ourselves right into this mess of transports. Oh, God. Uh, well, the War Dog is sunk for sure now. Avoiding torpedoes hit by a torpedo. Well, I mean, in a strange way, it's better. It's just, I mean, not in a strange way. It's definitely much better that the War Dog took that than the Highlander. Kind of means that we can operate the Highlander independently. She's almost surely sunk. Yeah, she's a goner. So we'll just try to sink a few transports right here. Come on, do it. We, yeah, okay, let's just move north. Let's hope that they focus on the War Dog for a bit, buy us a little bit of time. Let's get this transport, and we still need to sink one more, but we might be able to do that under cover of Nightfall. All right, now what we're going to do, oh, we hit the Tacoma. It's interesting, I wasn't even aiming for that one. I mean, apparently my ship is, but I, I was trying to sink. Okay, got this is gonna be too difficult. Let's move back, I have an idea. We're gonna move in range of the war dog. I don't know how fast she's actually gonna sink, 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 but we're gonna try to use her for cover. Weird, that didn't really report anything. Okay, we did hit the Stuart with two. That Stuart is probably seen its last day at sea. So let's move back towards the war dog, use her for cover. Okay, did it? we hit the sea? We are landing plenty of hits with the Highland. But this is what we are going to do. Dang it, it just sunk. I was going to use it for cover because they would attract the fire of the other ships. But now we're back on our own. However, we're landing hits, so we're going to go steady as she goes. Okay, we're exchanging fire now, but we have landed a few. My god, four more on the Cincinnati class, which is the wrong ship. Ah. Okay, this is one of the most frustrating cases of switching your firing target that I've ever seen. It's obvious that we're life or death fight with the two ships here. And they, and they, sink, they change <laughs> to a ship which is obviously sinking. That happens a lot. You know, they will fire at ships that are sinking. But to have two much higher priority targets and then switch to them is um, frustrating to say the least. Now we at least now we've switched back to the Cleveland, but it might already be too late. Okay, we are getting good hits in. Let's just keep our profile narrow so we don't take any uh, torpedo hits. I don't know why my text got all weird here on the on the left side. Now, are we flooding? Barely. This is just an engine hit again. Oh, no, no, yeah, it's, it's the real deal. Yeah, engine room hit, it was as well. So it's like the worst of it. It's everything. Because if we can disappear, it'll soon, not soon enough, be nightfall. Dang. I was looking at this thinking that 14 meant 4 in the afternoon. It does not. So uh, the row looks like it's going in for survivors. I just want to get away. But I also don't want to go near the Cincinnati, even though I want to sink it. But I don't want my crew to fire at ships which are already sinking. Uh, too many decisions. We'll just uh, line up. Okay, they always know when you launch torpedoes. I don't know why the AI was given the gift of omniscience, knowing when you launch torpedoes, but they, they have it, and they always avoid them. 
We're still doing some uh, pretty good damage. I'm surprised that we didn't get torpedoed there. So we'll just try to mosey away. Maybe we can repair some of the damage. And this light, it's this small merchant here. We still sink one of them. Who are we even aiming at right now? The row? Yeah, if, they, if those light cruisers have decided to bail, we're actually slower than the merchant ships. Oh, no, we got our speed up to nine. That's good to see. <laughs> Otherwise, this would be a, truly a long, long fight. All right, we have gotten better, or I should say worse weather conditions, but better. That's better for us. Let's take advantage of them. Sink this ship. Come on, sink it. Sink this ship. Okay, it's sunk. Now move on, still. Okay, we got 11 knots out of the engines. Steady as she goes. This is not a lost fight, this is a victory. If we can get close enough to sink one more transport ship. And then, dodge into the night, dodge into the night. Dang it, I knew it was gonna happen. Okay, well, in the end it's a major victory for the US. We did sink one light cruiser and three destroyers, heavy damage to another light cruiser, medium damage to two more, an auxiliary hit. I don't even know why this is such a bad, oh, it's because their ships are worth less points. Yeah, ours are worth 10,000, theirs are only worth 7,000, so. Okay, fair enough. Not a bad show though. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. We lost 500 on that. We're still overall ahead, so. Okay, that's a fun little start to the British war. Uh, sorry, American War. British-American War. The War of 1907, I guess. And we do have lack of foreign tonnage on stations. Where? It says it, but is it the Mediterranean? I mean, is it the Caribbean now that we just lost some ships? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That is enough. I'll, you know what? I'm going to call this video to a close here. It's already been a good episode, I feel like, with two good battles. Um... And then I'll, I'll have to investigate where everyone is and once again just make sure we have our ships distributed in the correct um, sea regions. So anyways, um, thanks for watching this episode and I'll catch you back very soon with the next. Until then, take care.